We are ready to assess the free agent class of 2022. Who made the right call? Who made the wrong call? We're looking at seven and 10 year deals. But you know what? We know enough already to make the call right here. Let's do a little digging in. This was a big year for free agent spending. 11 $100 million contracts. One of them going over $300 million. So let's start with the ones that look like good signings. That happens. That means at the end of the deal, the club will look back and be glad that they signed that player. Hey, we actually did an evaluation of the free agent market before the season began. It was the first week. It was our first show. And we had some favorites then. This is before they were playing. Length of the deal, track record of the player, cut of jib index. We use all the information. Here's what we said then. Here are my top five favorite deals of the 2022 offseason. And they ain't cheap. Freeman, six years. Correa, three years. I love the Max Scherzer deal. Three years? Take it. Kenley Jansen, one year. These guys are not cheap. But it's not the money, it's the return to scale. And the best return to scale this year was to spend big at the top end. That show was April 11th, our first MLB Now of the season. I'm sticking to that. That has to this point borne out. The best deals were, in fact, the high-end deals, big money deals. Freddie Freeman and Max Scherzer have been great so far this year. Look at this. Not good. Great. This is what you pay for. Top end performance. Freeman has an OPS plus of 153 right now. Plus base runner leads the leagues in hits and doubles. Scherzer has an ERA of 2.15 right now. 153 ERA plus as well. Look. It's only a three-year deal for Scherzer. It's already great for a third of it. And Carlos Correa, even after a slow start, has an OPS plus of 124 and over a three war, but plus four DRS. He has an opt-out after this year and will likely use it. So if it's a one-year deal for 35 million, that's a win for the Twins and him. And there's another win. I didn't call this one. Kevin Gosman, five years, $110 million. He's been excellent for the Jays, a 2.99 ERA, the 131 ERA plus. He actually is the league leader in fielding independent pitching, two and a half war. He's 31 starting a five-year deal, but you have to admit, I am. Gosman has delivered for the dough. All right, now to the biggest deal of the offseason. Corey Seager, 10 years, 325 million. After a slow start, Seager's having a good year, a 126 OPS plus and a 3.6 war. But let's be clear, in a 10-year deal, year one, you better have a great year. It's year one. Right now, Seager's having a good year. He's plus fielding shortstop in his prime. I can't say this is a bad deal, so I'll give it the dreaded inconclusive. All right, there's one other with that label. I'm going out on a limb. Mariners gave Robbie Ray five years for $115 million after a stellar year for the Blue Jays. He's been about league average this year, but he has worked. He's among the top pitchers in starts and innings. His K rate is still very high. He's always been mercurial. And for a five-year deal, I will call it inconclusive. So right now, we've got four good, two inconclusive. So get ready. That leaves five that don't look good already. Start with two seven-year deals. There's a long-term deal now, seven. Chris Bryant has been hitting actually pretty well. Look at his numbers. But he's been hurt a lot. Played just 42 games. At $26 million a year, the Rockies need him to play a lot more. Marcus Simeon running and fielding well, but his hitting is below league average. For $25 million a year, you need him to hit better than league average. It gets worse. Javi Baez has had a very rough year. OPS plus of 82, war of one. The leader of a disappointing Tigers season. Trevor Story has been below league average hitting and a war of just over two for both it's year one of a six-year deal at 23 million a year you need year one to be good not below league average and you can add Nick Castellanos to this group Castellanos has underperformed mightily he had a 125 OPS plus for the last four years this year He's got a 94. That's below league average. For 20 million a year, you need to be above league average, especially in year one. So, final tally on the $100 million club. You have five contracts that already look, shall we say, regrettable. Five look bad, four look good, nine, uh, two inconclusive. The green is the good, inconclusive, the yellow, Seeger and Ray. The red, the bad. I'm sorry, those are the ones that look bad. So I'm saying, if I had to make a call on the inconclusive, I'd say five good, six not good, which is actually in keeping with our findings a decade ago. I have a whole chapter of it in my book, which was now you know, written six years ago. A $100 million contract, despite the certainty of getting players with a good track record and voluminous data, is still about a 50-50 bet. We could wait seven years to make the calls on these deals, but I think this is about what it will be.
But if you went a little deeper, let's do that before we go. How about the deals just under 100 million? Kyle Schwarber got four years, just under 20 million a year. But he's been the impact bat the Phillies paid for. Leads the league in home runs, has a 125 OPS plus. The Mets did a similar deal for Starling Marte. He's already a three-win player, OPS plus 130. He's 33. It's only year one of a four-year deal, but I have to say he's delivered. Here's a lesson. Don't buy high on erratic performers. The Marlins did two four-year deals, both about 13 a year. Jorge Soler, Avasail Garcia. Both are right now on the injured list. Neither has played 90 games. Both are hitting below league average. Bad deal. Better idea? Buying low. The Yankees got Anthony Rizzo for two years, 16 million a year. He's been an excellent at bat in the middle of that Yankee lineup. He's got a 135 OPS plus. The Mets got Mark Canna for two years, just over 13 million a year. He has a 124 OPS plus. Neither came off their best year. Buy low. So, is there something to be learned from this year's crop? You know, what have we seen? What have we just heard? The research I just did? Yeah, we want to learn something. Sometimes the best deals are the expensive deals. Don't be afraid of the best player and the big money deal. Shorter is better. Money is not the problem. It's the opportunity cost of the long-term deal. Stack the money high, like the Mets did for Scherzer. Pay short. Buy low, not high. I just explained that. And I'll throw this in. Because it came down to Schwarber versus Castellanos. Castellanos had the track record. Schwarber was the stack cast darling. Believe in the process or the stack cast darling. Schwarber is one of those players. Get in the weeds, watch the at-bats, and believe in the players who consistently smoke the ball. <sighs> there we go. We've made the pause. Back with the guys now. Catch Talking your breath. Dan. All right, there we go. What do you think, Dan? Assess, I know you, you like to do this as well. What do you thought? Yeah, I thought all your points were great, BK. One of the things that really stood out for me is I think the industry starting to figure pitching out a little bit. You know, when you looked at your breakdown, there weren't really any bad pitching deals, and they were great mm. one-year deals with Rondon, Martin Perez. Right. So I think the industry is taking a really, really closer look uh, and doing a good job evaluating and, and getting pitching right. It's almost like the gut reaction on these. Remember, we talked a lot about this. Like when, I, when you first heard the deal that the Dodgers got for Freddie Freeman, what it hit you? Because that's hit, a good deal. I was like, what? They got Freddie Freeman for that? Not that he's getting ripped off, but that six years for that makes perfect sense. I think so the only deal things. that stood out for me that immediate bad reaction. One, I thought the story deal was a a, a bad setup because it happened so late. I don't think he was prepared. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was set up not to have a good year. And the Javi Baez deal for me, the first thing I jumped out at, you're buying for a lot of swings and misses on yeah. a team that may not be set up to have him mm -hmm. as a main contributing factor to try to win. In. All right. What are your thoughts? You're a genius. You were right on everybody. I have uh, got to admit it. I, I'm a Baez guy. I love that flair. You know the. Don't pay for flair, John. I, I, yeah. I was wrong. I, I was the same with Cespedes. You were right on that one as well. Long term, Going he was back. good the first year. Yeah. Um, Scherzer obviously has been worth every penny. Freeman, we knew that was a good deal going in. It's only, been, and I think Freeman's okay now. I mean, we saw him in the All-Star game in, in L.A., and he seemed happy. It oh, was a bad exactly. moment. Whether, and that's, you know, that's the We're talking about the team, right. not for the player. But that's the interesting thing is that yeah. he was, if there's ever a reason for, well, he was upset, he's in a new city, he's never been through this, all he did was deliver like a pro, which is what the cut of Jim oh. Index is all about. You knew that Freeman was going to deliver, and he absolutely has. Well, he's an amazing player. I mean, Semi and, and Brian, I think, are really good players. They're just fantastic negotiators. Those deals, <laughs> I guess those so. deals yeah. were just over from the beginning, right? They were they were a little too high. Yeah. They're both really good. Where are you really on Seager? I'm, I'm torn on Seager because, like, I'm yeah, I had a question for you on this one. He's playing well. He, here's the yeah. only disagreement I had. I just I really wanted to ask you this. So if you look at Seager's numbers and you look at Correa's numbers, they're very similar. Yeah. Seager's got – okay. Yeah. So if Correa had signed the, the uh, Seager deal, which is the deal he was mm. looking for, would you still put – Correa in a good signing, or is it because it's a one-year deal? No, it's, it's all the, it's a, the terms of a like, It's the term. Can, think of Seager's good now, this See, year. It's almost like the Francisco Lindor deal. Year one better be good in a 10-year deal. Because I look at the Correa ten. deal and I go, I, you know, with his ability, it's just okay. I haven't seen any signature moments. He hasn't carried that team. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been a month when you said, oh, my gosh, this guy really yeah, put this he, team on his back. He's hitting, his, he's fielding. I mean, that's what he's supposed to do. I know, but I, I just look at him and – 
if he wants to be a $300 million player, I mean, the OPS plus has got to be oh, 140, point. 150. But, but, the home runs have got to be 30 plus. The defense has to be there. Mm -hmm. He's playing well, like a $150 million player, not a $300 million but maybe player. Maybe you do a yeah. five year deal for him at $35 million he, per. That's still I mean, rich. With his defense, I think 120, what is it, 124? 126, 124. 124. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. I mean, with that defense, he's an outstanding player, and he missed a few games. Um, he's mm. also younger, you know. So if he'd gotten that ten-year year deal, yeah. I would feel one okay year. about it. It's a one-year. Yeah. No, one one year younger well, than Seager. Than Seager, yeah, I think so. It's 20, I think 20, 28, 27. I think. But I, I, one, I don't think, it's think it's two. I, anyway, I'd still, I, I'm only putting it inconclusive because I'm saying ten years. Like, I get it. you're, you're going to be looking it. at a 35, 36-year-old Corey Seager. But again, I want to give credit. He's delivering now. If you deliver now, get that high-end performance.